All right. Wonderful. Uh, thanks for your patience and sorry for the delay. Uh, it's not perfect, but we are um, well starting our presentation here. Um, we were asked to provide some insights on, on some international processes, some global processes, and I'm happy to present here as a first presenter on, on CODES, the CODES Coalition. It's the Coalition for Digital Environmental Sustainability and is working on the UN level, on the global level, with a mandate by the UN Secretary General. And I will provide a quick overview on why we exist, what we are doing, and how you can start engaging with us as well. Afterwards, we try to uh, include Sören from GIZ to present something on uh, GIZ's global work in this um, perspective. And uh, Christian will close the, the panel session uh, with some of UBA's contribution, the German Environmental Agency in this regard, um, and options for further engagement with civil society actors, etc. And then we can have an open-ending uh, discussion. So the general motivation, of course, is uh, that we see two mega transformations uh, ongoing uh, in this century, the sustainability transformation and the digital transformation with very different dynamics, of course. Uh, the digital transformation driven by economic interests, different stakeholders that engage here. Um, and the sustainability transformation, of course, that still needs uh, a lot of engagement and action uh, to further develop and to succeed. We have very different paths uh, ahead for the future, just yeah, uh, two exemplary ones. We at CODES are still uh, of the opinion that we are not yet on track regarding our sustainability goals and that digitalization is not yet uh, really supporting sustainability agenda around the world. So we really have to start shaping this and uh, also engage on the intern, the transnational and the global level in the relevant political fora to foster this, to make a difference here. We of course can envision a green and positive future, also including tech, uh, where tech supports biodiversity protection, where tech supports circularity in our uh, economic frameworks and sectors, where tech supports uh, humans uh, getting connected, uh, having access to different resources and to further uh, strive for the good. But of course, we are, as said, not yet on track. Um, at the moment, we accelerate the triple planetary crisis uh, with many impacts of digital technology and digital change, uh, accelerating resource consum consumption, inequalities and social divisions. CODES itself then is a response really to two blind spots. Uh, most of you are familiar with the left-hand side, the 2030 agenda, the big UN agenda with our 17 sustainable development goals that were developed in 2015, but had a big blind spot. They did not really anticipate digital change as really a transformative, a disruptive force for all its 17 goals. So digital technologies, technology as such, is rarely mentioned in this uh, important document that really streamlines the global agen agenda for cooperation worldwide. Tech, digital change, digital transformation is missing. Big blind spot. And then second, uh, very surprisingly, on the right-hand side, you see the UN Secretary General's Roadmap for Digital Cooperation, and this was published 2020. And even though that in the UN system the 2030 agenda is of course very relevant and quite mainstreamed, uh, the sustainability dimensions, the env environmental dimensions of digital change uh, were also missing. So um, this led to the establishment of uh, another track mandated by the UN uh, General Secretary um, with a mandate to further develop, uh, to conceptualize, to work for this environmental sustainability dimension in digital cooperation. This is the mandate of CODES. What is CODES? Hello? No. What is CODES? Is it working still? Do, 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 do. Now it's better. Um, CODES is uh, on its day-by-day -day business, so to say, driven and uh, carried by a different set of co-champions here on the left-hand side, so uh, the German Environmental Agency as the German branch, but also the UN Environmental Program, UNEP, the UN Development Program, International Science Council, Future Earth, um, uh, Sustainability in the Digital Age, and uh, the Republic of Kenya as well as an uh, African partner in our network. And we, in our weekly meetings, so to say, in our effort to create different documents and uh, foster action, political action, uh, work clo closely together to, uh, to further develop this uh, coalition. We are in close contact, 
due to the mandate with the tech envoy, recently appointed, Amandeep Jill, by the way, also a very inspiring person. You can look up and uh, we meet regularly and align our agenda. We also have a growing community. You can sign in, so to say. You can uh, yeah, align yourself to us. And uh, there are over a thousand individuals and different organizations already joining this community. In these first 12 months of our existence, uh, we developed this uh, action plan, the action plan for a sustainable planet in the digital age. And I will just briefly in a couple of slides guide you through these topics. It's a co-creative process, uh, uh, how we develop this um, agenda. Um, we had a debate in the UN General Assembly on these topics. We have different consultations, different stakeholder rounds, where we engaged uh, in online webinars with uh, different audiences. And uh, we had a big conference uh, 2021 uh, organized and uh, also participated in several political fora in this regard. So we, for example, presented a draft at the uh, UN Environmental Assembly in Nairobi uh, to discuss with uh, different stakeholders. And finally, in June this year, so a couple of months ago, we presented the Codes Action Plan as our first important product uh, in uh, Stockholm, in Stockholm Plus 50, so an important uh, celebrity or a celebration moment uh, in Stockholm to uh, uh, to celebrate 50 years of, of, of a, a UN environmental program and further action. So we were also asked to develop a very simple narrative how to structure this and on the very upper level so to say the highest level uh, this is what we came up in these consultations and in, the, in our core group uh, with our um, different co-authors, uh, the three systemic shifts. We're calling for three systemic shifts for collective action. Uh, on this top level, it's really about first aligning digitalization with sustainable development, uh, creating different links. I give some examples in a minute to mitigate the negative impacts uh, of digital infrastructure and to accelerate also, of course, also invest in digital innovations and social innovations connected to these digital tools for our sustainability agenda. You don't have to dive into this, but we also in the product itself, in the action plan, exemplify uh, these three shifts with different examples. We call them six strategic priorities each. So we talk about six enablers to uh, create this alignment in the first shift, so to connect communities, build competencies in different regards, uh, to address six important, important urgent problems. Think about high energy use. You are very aware here at the conference about that. The, the material base uh, of digital change, so from the rare earth metals in the uh, different countries, uh, the whole supply chain uh, up to e-waste problems, of course, big problems, but also all these problems regarding a global perspective, a development perspective, digital divides, access to technology, to uh, really applications that help to, uh, to foster sustainable development. And we identify six innovations here. Mm, that we think are important to foster, to engage in. For example, what we call a planetary digital twin, the whole idea on how to use better environmental data for assessment making, for understanding nature, for protecting biodiversity hotspots. Uh, UNEP is, for example, uh, working in this field very heavily with, her, with their environmental uh, intelligence room, uh, collecting data, making uh, constant assessment, so to say. Uh, digital twin, uh, the circularity issue, of course, very important, and the many fields where really concrete uh, enhancements of lives in the developed world, for example, can be created with just transition tools. Lastly, and uh, I think this is the last wheel you see here on the slide, uh, but we also thought about different impact initiatives, so initiatives, concrete initiatives where we wanted to start to collaborate with other actors uh, that we want to promote, that we briefly sketched also in the, uh, in the action plan itself. Uh, these nine impact initiatives, we call them, for implementation. They are catalytic uh, in style, so they have to lever transformational change, they have to be global in character, and they have to be multi-stakeholder based. And we are actually in the impl implementation already. I think that's quite quick. I myself am surprised. I just want to uh, give you a, a quick glimpse for example, our Canadian partners of Future Earth started to uh, develop a program on education 
for digital sustainable development and they want to upscale this uh, in collaboration with UNESCO uh, the next year uh, to make it a, a global program. The German Environmental Agency, for example, started a team and uh, started building up a workshop series uh, to develop this idea of a green digital infrastructure pledge for state actors. So sustainable procurement we talked about a lot in this conference, for example, so we are in uh, the first steps to engage with environmental, uh, European environmental agencies, but also other civil society actors already engaged in this field. So the idea is not that we implement everything. We are a small team of co-champions or uh, with, a, with, a, with a community around it, but that we really strengthen the ties to different organizations, institutions, uh, stakeholders that already do work in these fields and can foster change here. The seventh impact initiative, for example, Digital Sustainability Innovation Hubs, fancy name, it's really the idea to, uh, to create a regional local network to co-develop with local stakeholders, research, practitioners on the ground in the development context, solutions that really help in the field of uh, medicine, uh, telemedicine, for example, or uh, education, uh, weather data, etc. And um, the UNDP development program is starting already to work on that, to uh, um, bring this into practice with the different other stakeholders. And last but not least, data and assessments as digital public goods. Here I'm very pleased that hopefully Søren from GIZ is with us today because um, UNEP and uh, hopefully GIZ as well are partnering up to uh, further develop this idea, to uh, make a study with different stakeholders, uh, member state stakeholders, uh, what this could entail and how, what kind of environmental data sets and what kind of a platform and capacity building could be really useful for uh, different countries in the world um, and, and, and how this could be established. So as I said, we refer to different uh, relevant uh, processes on the UN level here on the left-hand side, and we really try to steer and foster the debate at different uh, political occasions uh, here on the right-hand side. And I, with my final slides, uh, want to briefly give you an idea on how to further engage. Uh, the Summit of the Future is an important date. This was uh, delayed one year now, a couple of weeks ago, so this will happen now in 2024. Um, because here the Global Digital Compact will be uh, discussed and, and negotiated and finalized. So this is an important uh, international process you should all uh, care about because you also can engage in it. You can join the COAST community online, you can engage in our roundtables. We will have a side event at IGF, the Internet Governance Forum this year in Ethiopia. Uh, you can of course with your organization start to co-lead an impact initiative, also um, yeah. Uh, advocate for codes as an expert. And of course, I mean, as we are here in Germany, it's also important to mention that we as German Environmental Agency are here as a so-called German link to this international network. We have different tools also online available. So with the action plan, we um, published um, open stakeholder mapping as an annex to this action plan. So here you can have a look, um, discover the different uh, stakeholders. We collected in an uh, online accessible air table and a mapping device where you can play around a little bit with. And you can also submit your own initiative. Lastly, I want to, uh, you to urge and have a look at the uh, Global Digital Compact more in depth. Uh, this was delayed, of course, now for one year, but nevertheless, you can contribute to the Global Digital Compact process. So this is an open stakeholder um, conversation at the moment, and there, there's an online tool where you can really yeah, provide your input as an individual, as an organization, uh, to, uh, uh, to help shape this discussion. Uh, that's it for now. Uh, yeah, thanks a lot. Sören, du könntest jetzt beginnen und es wäre gut, wenn du wenigstens Kopfhörer noch aufsetzen würdest. Dann probieren wir das jetzt mal.
Also. Geht's jetzt besser? Habe ich Kopfhörer auf? Hallo, Maxel? Das geht gut. Okay, danke sehr. Wunderbar. Bin ich der Erste? Du könntest jetzt deine Präsentation teilen, wenn du möchtest, und anfangen. Ah, gut. Also herzlichen Dank. Also es freut mich sehr. Oh, I'm very happy to participate. Ist auf Englisch, ne? So I'm very happy to participate in this uh, presentation. My name is Soren Gigli. I work for the GIZ as a program lead. And we are specific uh, for the digital and green twin transition. So for us, it's very important that the intersection between green and digital transformation is not yet fully developed. It's in really area that is, uh, is evolving. We've been also working a lot with CODIS and UNEP and the other partners in providing support in development of CODIS. So uh, but, uh, at the, in fact, the green and digital transformation is taking place at the same time and they're closely intertwined with each other. And uh, we really believe that digital innovations such as AI, blockchain, IoT, supercomputing provide unprecedented opportunities on the one hand to enhance the sustainability of the digital sector and then to be an important enabler for uh, climate action across all sectors. But what is very important that there's a radical new thinking and business models required. So because business as usual, just not be sufficient to address the climate crisis. Uh, another very important topic we believe is to take the best innovations out of the lab into the market. So especially for us in Europe, it's a real challenge to commercialize the digital tech innovations and we face a lot of challenges in the actual scale up of tech solutions because of the, the lack of uh, early stage financing and also growth financing. So we have a real innovation gap and innovations. A lot of startups face serious issues of scaling up their, their programs. So uh, the next, so here's uh, of course the CODES, but I think you've already discussed that. Uh, three important issues of uh, aligning alignment, a common vision, mitigating negative impact, accelerating innovations. So it's really about addressing both greening of ICTs and ICTs for green. Uh, now the issue is that the environmental footprint of uh, digital technologies is rapidly increasing. So we have a real challenge there. So six to eight percent of electric, electricity consumption is caused by the ICT sector and 2 to 4 percent of carbon emissions. But there are actually projections that the carbon emissions of the tech, of the digital sector could increase to 8 or almost 10 percent if we don't take actions now uh, and to manage it. So data centers alone account a very important percentage of, of uh, carbon emissions, but not just data centers, it's also issue of e-waste, the devices, the mobile phones, uh, a very big uh, issue. And uh, what is very important to enhance the life cycle and to enhance circularity in digital devices. So now, uh, concretely, what are we doing about this? So we as the GIZ right now work very closely with the ministry, the BMZ, and uh, the EU, but also with uh, the consortium of uh, different mem EU member states, so Sweden, Germany, uh, France, Belgium, Estonia, Finland, uh, also Spain, Spain to sit on a call, so called Team Europe initiative, which is basically bringing all the countries together to develop a joint up program to address these challenges and support developing countries all around the world. It's a global program, so uh, we are currently designing, and it has these four major components. 
the first is to address the enabling environment and policy framework because it's not just about tech solutions. A key topic we are, we are seeing is that most countries have no policies in place, no regulatory framework, which actually is addressing the issue of twin transition. A key topic we are here seeing is that many times there are ministries of environment and then ministries of digital or ICTs, and there's very little uh, overlap. And here we are proposing basically to put together a joint up program between the different ministries within government. And we've been just and just back from a fact finding mission we had for data economy, and the environmental issues in eight African countries, and that has occurred as a major request from countries like South Africa, Kenya, Senegal, Rwanda, who really would like to work and address issues of the digital and green twin transition, but right now would require strong support and technical assistance in this area. So this is component two, to raise awareness of the topic, particularly of the intersection of green and digital and then provide technical assistance to policymakers in a multi-stakeholder approach. So really working closely with the private sector, as, uh, academia, civil society, and, the, and governments in promoting uh, this uh, new thinking. The third we find, uh, we think is essential, so which is about the innovation ecosystems. So we just know also in our close partnership with UNFCCC and UNEP, uh, one issue we have seen is that the current technologies are not sufficient to address the climate change uh, challenges. So we have to innovate. Startups have to develop new tech, and there are many startups that uh, work closely on green tech. But the enabling environment here, the ecosystems need to be strengthened, and that's why we are working closely also through related programs to support uh, innovation hubs, uh, a network of innovation hubs, which would uh, in Europe is called the Digital Innovation Hub Program, and we link then the plan is to link innovation hubs uh, in the Africa region, in uh, Latin America, Asia, with hubs and research centers in in Europe. And the last point uh, is critical here is actually the access to finance. So everybody talks about climate action and finance. But in fact, uh, the venture capital market is only focusing 6 to 8% of global venture capital financing goes towards green tech. So it's very challenging. So it's already challenging in, uh, in Germany or Europe to uh, find financing, uh, particularly for the uh, scale-up phase. So it's uh, the incubation phase, but you know it's usually relative still possible, say, to raise one or two million at the early stage of innovation, but once to scale up your innovations, it's very challenging. And so we basically work with uh, uh, the different DFIs, the development finance institutions, uh, to develop improved access to finance. Uh, in this area here, the KFW plays a kind of critical role, but also uh, EIB and uh, World Bank and other DFIs. So uh, this is at the core here. You see the, the partners for this uh, twin transition, digital Europe, uh, excuse me, Europe in transition joined up program of Team Europe, which is basically here. Of course, the core is the European Union through the Global Gateway program, but we have strong partnership with UNEP, ODES, <laughs> UNDP, uh, UNFCCC and uh, and others, also the African Union. So uh, here then would be more details of each component. Uh, so regulations, framework, again, access to finance. But I'm, sh I'm sure you are short of time. So <laughs> I just wanted to emphasize that uh, we are working closely in also linking the ecosystems between uh, Europe, Germany, and, uh, and Africa region and Latin America, because that's essential to have this innovation partnership to bringing the P2 
people who work on this area, in this area, and the thought leaders together to implement then concrete and specific programs on the ground. Oh, and the last area, I, so I forgot to mention, but that's very important. So we also pl plan on supporting uh, demonstration projects, like real use cases, say air pollution control programs through digital or smart city programs so in agriculture. So to to really provide support to the concrete implementation of uh, demonstration projects on the ground. And here we see a lot of potential to uh, work together and enable both a south-to-south -south learning exchange, say between the Africa region, Latin America, and Asia, but also to facilitate innovation and knowledge partnerships between Europe and uh, our partners in developing countries. Thank you so much for having me, and I hope you have a great rest of the panel. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Yeah, hello, uh, I want to take over. I'm Christian Löwe from the German Environment Agency and um, I want to give you a little bit, only five, six minutes and then we go into discussion. Um, how important is to talk on governance? I think uh, Beitz and Bäume uh, in 2018 but also today shows how it's difficult to formalize a an, an, an global agenda on, on, on this very complex matter. And uh, I'm very thankful that uh, Beitz and Bäume uh, represents a kind of a, a, um, a voice of civil society because there is one big problem in this area, uh, that civil society is not visible in all these international governments. And uh, so uh, at the moment I want to talk a little bit that uh, the digital governance um, over uh, transported by ITU and others are a, a very strong uh, disruptor of existing governing structures. And uh, so important is that we are not having only national policies or European-wide policies. We need the call for a global governance system. system. And um, I will uh, show you that um, uh, the dynamics are, uh, uh, um, are now coming up that um, the digital is overloading, I would say, the existing governing system and is contradictory to other forms of global governance. For, for example, gender equity, uh, child uh, uh, safety, uh, human rights, and so on. And I think that was uh, the common notion on, on, on the first day on Friday, how we respond as, a, as an actor, not also as a government, as a society. And uh, so... Um, I will show you a little bit how, how, how the international governance system is already existing and it's not very easy to position uh, uh, political demand. Uh, we have to develop an understanding that there are out a lot of complex institutional mechanisms and procedures. And um, for example, that the global and environment governance system is already complex with all these conventions, procedures, institutional settings. So for CSOs, for civil society um, organization, it's very hard to create capacities to be a partner in this uh, uh, negotiation process. Uh, and uh, member states are also losing grounds compared to global uh, um, organized um, companies, for example. So we have to develop a kind of understanding that is not enough to put a declaration on, on, on the table and, and, and demanding it. We have to think about who we want to direct this um, um, declaration. Um, and so uh, the institution of Uber created in 70, uh, 1974 was one of the institutions to create such a body of evidence-based policies and um, we as Uber, we have 700 uh, employees, we are sitting in over 300 different international committees and, 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 and agencies. So that means that it's not very easy to establish uh, a codes uh, action plan or to establish a new uh, global 
global uh, regulatory uh, community. We have to anticipate that there are so many different institutions and this makes it for CSO very complex to be all in the same room. And uh, for example, um, we have to define what is the rule of uh, G7, G20, for example. Uh, or we have to talk uh, what the European Council uh, is important and so on. So it is a kind of learning of institutions that is very important, especially for CSO, addressing um, their demands uh, and their positions. Um, I, I jump over a little bit. Um, what we're doing uh, in the digital agenda. I mean, codes is not a standalone uh, activity. It is a kind of a complementary activity that started already uh, in 2019, uh, where the, uh, uh, the scientific body of WGBU launched their report. It was complemented by Bites and Bäume as a more alternative view on the thing. Um, but also the government developed their digital strategies and also the environmental ministry developed of their strategy in 2020. This was a coincidence that we already had, uh, that we had the German presidency at the EU. So it was important to have a national strategy and complemented a, a EU presidency uh, council conclusion on this. So this is a kind of a policy design we have to extend. Um, so we used the opportunity or the window of opportunity to even uh, put something on the top with codes uh, as a global framework of action. Uh, and, and so this is a kind of a, a, a design of a policy area that is not very easily to understand, it is not very easily to um, disrupt, it is not very uh, easily to influence. So how, how we want to influence as a as in governmental body? Uh, first of all, I think green IT, that is a core competence. Without green IT understanding, without the uh, understanding that we need international standards. Uh, without standards, we cannot uh, create accountability, we cannot create transparency, and um, uh, we cannot define what is responsibility. Yeah? Do, if you have not a kind of a common set of understanding of criteria, uh, so green IT in terms of criteria of energy efficient data centers, or the question how are standards for green coding activities. Uh, so that is very important to understand the, the, the standardization bodies. Um, at the moment, at Bites and Bäume, I haven't met anybody from the standardization bodies, why they are not here <laughs> and discussing with us. Um, then the question of data governance. I mean, we as Uber was created as an institution to organize data, uh, because data are the baseline for evidence-based uh, environmental policies. So um, we are now uh, developing a kind of a, a integration model, and uh, also we institutionalize the so-called national environmental data center. So we are not only collecting, but we are trying to harmonizing and to integrate data, because there are so many different data, uh, uh, what calling Friedhöfe, uh, they are not used. Yeah? So uh, the government is collecting data, but they are not organized to, to be uh, um, useful. Um, so this is the role to put all the different data from a, a global, European, national and um, local level together. But also we are developing now with a close to 20 million uh, euro program uh, how um, artificial intelligence, machine learning can help us to create our own competencies in this area. It's not only to regulate um, artificial intelligence, but to create a momentum and the competence to use wisely uh, IE applications within our governmental duties. So we are setting up a, a new institutional body in Leipzig uh, with close to 20 people. They are creating um, machine lo learning applications uh, for environmental policies. Um, then I think it's very important uh, the question of governance and uh, social ecological transformation. Um, because that is uh, where civil society organization and uh, individuals can make a difference because here is not only the question of modeling, for example, the resource consumption of future trends of uh, uh, digital technologies. It is also a question of how we want to democratize uh, uh, um, environmental policy because a digital solution can help 
uh, to increase the level of uh, participation. So we are also making research, for example, in the area of smart cities and livelihoods, for example, how we can create in an urban environment e-participation models for more uh, uh, sustainability in, in urban development processes. Or we are uh, developing um, a framework how digital sufficiency could be part of a policy agenda. That is not uh, a self-runner. Uh, it is not only on the question of how digital solution can help to make more efficient. No, we have to question and to, uh, to frame it uh, how digital sufficiency can be part of the European uh, policy agenda, for example. But we are also doing um, the role of serious gaming. So we are trying to open up uh, uh, different uh, communities to pay in into a common agenda. Um, and what is very important, and uh, I was surprised that that was not raised on the first panel on Friday, the role of institutions. Uh, uh, I mean, the question of how the digital age will change our institutions itself. So the question of um, what is uh, um, a modern uh, government, um, how is, uh, what is the question of usability, etc., etc. So that is a package um, of, 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 I would say, our contribution uh, to a, a, a European or a global agenda. And uh, the last, uh, we have also some funds to help to support uh, initiatives, for example. Um, um, we have, for example, an ongoing uh, project uh, with Konzeptwerk um, uh, Neue Ökonomie. So we, we are trying to, to build competences and capacities in, in civil society. Uh, these two projects uh, with Konzeptwerk Neue Ökonomie and uh, the BUND project on self-determined uh, digitalization are a co-funding of the Bites and Bäume because a lot of... Um, <laughs> um, 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 sessions uh, in the three days are co-financed by our institutions, for example. And that is good. We have to create a kind of interplay. Um, so, um, and interesting, we are also uh, partnering with cultural institutions because our understanding is that it's not only a technical revolution, it's a cultural revolution. And we have to understand how to bridge environmental policy with social policy, with cultural policy, and that makes uh, a bigger uh, deal and um, so we question you and others um, we know that we are working with Ralph Bushman from B&D with Tillman Santarius and all but we need much more institution much more people and uh, the ministry is developing a kind of a community network on this issue sustainable digitalization you can sign up but I think we can offer you also uh, how we want to use the Bites and Bäume 2022 uh, to make a follow-up uh, that makes an impact in the political agenda, and uh, this could be a point of discussion. Thank you very much.